move into our Q&A panel. Join us on the Q&A panel. We welcome our previous presenters and Elizabeth Friedman, who is a regulatory counsel in the Office of Generic Drug Policies Division of Policy Development. We'll now turn over to Lisa to facilitate the Q&A panel. Welcome, Lisa. Great. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Ray, and to all of our presenters. So for all of our participants, if you can go ahead and ask your questions in the chat pod, and we will get to as many questions as we can. Our first question is for Mr. Shen. Is the Orange Book updated daily? Hi, yeah, uh, just consent. And yes, uh, the Orange Book, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, provide uh, update on a daily basis, monthly basis, and on an annual basis. And uh, on a daily basis, we do uh, post all the uh, daily approval for generic and all the patent information that uh, is submitted. And all and uh, uh, I, just regarding to my file six I reporting, and those will be uh, monthly changes. Great, thank you, Commander Shen. We have another question for you. There are several ANDAs listed in our company name that have been withdrawn. How do I notify the Orange Book? Okay, yeah, thank you for the questions. Uh, well, first, make sure you ha actually submitted uh, your, the, the proper submission, uh, su such as uh, any file six i reporting that uh, you're supposed to submit. And if you submit those and then you haven't seen any changes, uh, say in, in your case, several end are still listed uh, in the active section after you submit a withdrawn. Just contact the Orange Book staff uh, at orangebook at fda.hhs.gov and we'll provide a response. Thanks. Thank you. And another question for you. Is 506C reporting necessary for OTC? Okay, thank you for the question again. Uh, so, uh, as we remember when uh, presenting the file six C reporting, uh, the re requirement is for a drug product that is like uh, term critical. Uh, the definition of that is a life supporting, life sustaining, or uh, intended use in the prevention or treatment of a debilitating disease or conditions. I'm not sure how many of the OTC product qualify for that, but if you're not sure, shoot an email to the um, drug shortage staff at uh, uh, see the drug shortage at fda.hhs.gov and they will guide you uh, whether or not uh, you need to provide full reporting. Thanks. Okay, great. And one last question for you and, and then we'll go to Kendra. So for 506C reporting, is the reporting obligation for API for certain drugs with the NDA or ANDA application holder, or is it the N API manufacturer slash DM? Okay, uh, as mentioned earlier, also in my presentation, that API and DMF holders are not uh, subject to 506C uh, regulations, and only the a manufacturer for the finished dosage forms are uh, required to report in 506C. For example, you're making uh, dexamethasone, you know, right now it's a popular drug out there, and you notice that, you know, you cannot obtain your API, then that, you know, as the manufacturer of, you know, of the dexamethasone, that you are responsible to report that information to uh, drug storage staff. So not the API, you don't need to tell the API or, uh, DMF holder to report 506C because they're not subject uh, to 506C regulations. Thanks. Thank you, Commander Shen. And again, if anyone has questions, please put them in the chat pod and we will try to, again, get to as many questions as we can. So our next question is for Kendra. Should the transfer of ownership application request be submitted as an EC? TD submission by both the former and the new owner? Hi, Lisa. Thank you for that question. So 
Um, the requirements under a transfer of ownership are for both the former owner as well as the new owner to submit information to the FDA. And so both of those submissions should be sent via an, um, an electronic submission to the FDA. Okay, great. We have another question for you. When you state that you could include others on the 356H form, would it be for all different dosage forms and dosages of the drug product with the same active ingredients? Or do you have, if you've had a corporate merger and you were transferring 20 or more drug products over with different active ingredients, forms, and dosages? So, the, in the presentation, we talked about submitting a consolidated list of applications. So that um, reference was not specific to the 356H form. There are certain requirements for that form, and I would definitely refer anyone intending to submit information to the FDA to refer to the instructions for filling out form FDA 356H, which gives you detailed information on what must be on each 356H form, as well as, um, you know, generally that refers to one application, but there are specific uh, requirements if you're submitting to, um, uh, to multiple applications um, for your file. But what we do ask um, relative to the Orange Book is that you submit um, an attachment. So in your submission, you include an attachment of all of the um, relevant applications intending to be transferred so that we have a copy of that information and we are aware of um, all of the affected applications under a particular transfer. That way those applications are processed around the same time and that um, none of those applications get missed. Great. Thank you, Kendra. Another question for you. Does the not available for sale only apply to approvals of original NDAs and ANDAs, or does it also apply to other submissions, for example, PAS that were filed in order to relaunch a previously discontinued project? So the not available for sale notification is really intended for um, original approvals of NDAs and ANDAs. If your product is currently in the discontinued section of the Orange Book and you filed a prior approval supplement to relaunch the product, it will, um, you do not need, to, and, and you don't intend to market it within 180 days, it will remain in the discontinued section of the Orange Book until you notify us of, um, there is, it's not under regulation, but we do ask that, um, that you submit a notification to us when you intend to relaunch your product. So um, I guess the basic response there is that the not available for sale is only relevant to the approval of an original NDA or ANDA. Thank you, Kendra. Our next question is going to be for Eunice. <clears throat> so, um, for Eunice, on slide seven, is there a specific reason why LVPs are excluded from paying the program? So, it, um, that is an exception in under section 736A to B, which states um, that if it's identified on a list um, compiled under Section 505J7 in a potency described in terms of 100 milliliters. Um, I believe it had to do with uh, decreasing the administrative burden for billing products, but you can take a look at the um, House report from 2002 that may have more details on that reason. Great, thank you. And another question for you. So when should a company pay if an NDA was submitted in October of I believe they, uh, this person is asking about application fees. Um, you would need to pay your application fee at the time of submission. So if you plan to submit your NDA in October 2021, it would be due at that time. 
Great, thank you. Another question for you. How long does it take for FDA to review a waiver? Um, generally, it takes uh, about three to four months, um, but um, it could depend on the complexity um, and if we need to consult other parts of the agency. Great, thank you. And another question. So is the program fee, is that 336000 per drug for each drug, or is it for per? That would be per, um, per drug, so per billable product. Great. And one last question for you before we go back to Commander Shin. You said if a new, if a new pro drug product is approved and it is issued a TE code in the Orange Book, that it would not be subject to program fees. Are there any TE codes that would not apply? Um, no, not at this time. So if you have a TE code, you are exempt. OK, great. And our next question is for Kenshin. If an approved ANDA was not commercially launched and it is more than 180 days after approval, is the applicant allowed to submit notification to Orange Book staff for not available for sale? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes, the, the, uh, as a manufacturer, you, to comply with the statutes, you have to re report uh, any product that you're not able to launch at 180 day to us. Now, uh, you can let us know if, say, your, your product available at day 200, you still need to submit that, you know, at day 180, and, but then you can let us know that, oh, in a uh, uh, 50 year or so day that you will be submitting your uh, uh, product to the market and or ship your product to distributors. So you still have to let us know, but uh, we'll take uh, decisions whether or not it's worth the time, you know, it takes about 30 to 60 days for us to move product back and forth. So we'll de determine at that time whether or not we'll take any Orange Book uh, related uh, actions. So you do have to report to us, you know, if 180 days that you do not ship your product out, you have to let us know. Okay, great. Another question for you. Can FDA publish a list of withdrawn of sale products? Okay, right now we don't have a independent list of all the withdrawal products. The best way to find out whether or not a product is, has been withdrawn uh, from sale is to check the electronic orange book and if they list in the discontinue section and those products are not uh, in sales right now. So, thanks. Okay, great. And one last question for you, and then we'll move to Kendra. We submitted the one-time 506i report to move our products to the discontinued section of the Orange Book in 2018. And today, our products are still listed in the active section of the Orange Book. Do we need to submit a new 506i? Okay, uh, you do not need to resubmit a new 506i if you already submitted one-time reporting. And in we, I believe we process all the one-time reporting. But however, if you find uh, discrepancy uh, of your product, say you know you requested this continuation is still in the active section, please notify the Orange Book team at uh, Orange Book at fda.hhs.gov. Thanks. All right, great, thank you. And our next question is for Kendra. My company is transferring a few of our products to another company. I sent my transfer of ownership request to the FDA nearly three months ago, and when I last checked the orange book, our name is still showing as the applicant holder for these products. Why hasn't our transfer of ownership process been request been? Sure. Uh, so in, in a case like that, um, it's very likely that we do not yet have the information from the new owner 
the, the new owner is required to um, submit an acceptance letter for the relevant applications. Uh, what I would suggest is um, for this person, you may contact the Orange Book staff directly to um, look into exactly the, um, the exact nature or the status of the transfer of ownership request. But I do want to remind um, you know, industry that you are required, uh, that the new owner is required to submit information before that transfer of ownership request can be processed. OK, great. And another question for you. I'd like to submit a company name change to the FDA. Do I need to follow the regulations in 314? Um, so for, no, so for corporate name changes, especially for applications that are under the same parent company, those are not considered a transfer of ownership. So um, in this case, you'll need to submit a letter to the FDA uh, identifying your submission as a corporate name change. Um, as well, you'll need to let us know when the date change will occur and if there is um, any updated contact information relative to that corporate name change. OK, great. And we actually have a question now for Eunice. If I submitted a waiver request for a PDUFA program fee and the decision is pending, but our waiver gets granted every year. Can I can I get my invoice to? So um, so we do not grant deferrals of user fees. Um, so therefore, all program fees should be paid without regard to a pending request uh, for a for a waiver. So as I mentioned, you know, if you don't pay on time, your firm and any affiliates will go on the arrears list, um, and any applications or supplements that are submitted will not be reviewed. Um, and then there's also penalties and interest that start to accrue. So it's recommended that um, even if you're waiting for a waiver request uh, decision, you pay your bill on time. And if your waiver request does get granted after you pay, you will get a refund. Great, thank you. And a qu another question for you. If a transfer of ownership for a PDUFA product is not reflected in the orange book by June 30th, but the change is made later in the year, can you revise? Um, no, we do not revise invoices. Um, we generally recommend that if that is the case, a uh, firm just pays the invoice as is, and then the firms involved can transfer funds um, between them on their own. Um, however, if um, this big if, if the transfer of ownership does get updated before September 30th in the Orange Book, and then um, the previous firm submits a refund request um, for the old firm, and they do get refunded before we issue cleanup invoices, we could bill the new firm. However, this is a very small window of time, so um, and the refund would have to be be granted in that window of time for all that to work out. So we generally recommend that the firms just handle um, transferring funds internally amongst themselves. OK, great. Thank you for clarifying that. And we have a question now for Elizabeth. Are marketing reports required under 506i available to the public? Uh, so the answer to that is no. Um, FDA will not publish the copies of the marketing reports we receive, but we will update the orange book as appropriate as they are reviewed and processed. OK, great. Thank you, Elizabeth. And we have another question for Commander Shen. How will we know which APIs are critical for 506C reporting? Is there a list, or or is it the manufacturer? Okay, yeah. Thank you for that question. Uh, currently, if you, you know, the best way 
to know if your product is critical on the critical drug list that uh, you know mandated to report uh, on the file six C. Contact the drug storage staff, and they will guide you. Uh, they will let you know whether or not uh, the the statute will apply to your product. Thanks. Great, thank you to all of our presenters and all of our panelists. We appreciate your time, taking the time out of.